Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great Sunday. Um, I just wanted to hop on and share with you some of my thoughts and reflections um, from the books that I've read this past year. So what did I enjoy um, reading? What did I not enjoy so much? Um, and where do I want to take this channel next year? And uh, what are my reading goals? So uh, I'll start on a high note and share with you some of my five star reads. I do uh, rate books on a five star scale and this really helps me sort of try to be as objective as possible um, and uh, order my feelings in a rational way uh, about you know how I felt about the book versus um, you know what I can sort of order in my mind about my more rational explanations for giving it the rating that I do or how I should rate it I think um, so that's for non, you know, I've got a rubric for nonfiction and a rubric for um, fiction. And really what I'm looking for in nonfiction, um, which is what I'm going to share with you, is, you know, just how well does the author present their argument? What evidence do they use to support their interpretations? Um, how wide ranging is the list of resources? Um, you know, spelling, grammar. How does the argument flow? Things like that. Um, so anyways, uh, the first book that I wanted to share with you, um, I did 8% of the books that I read were five star reads, but I've only got two that I want to show uh, in this video at least. And um, the first one, which was by far my favorite read of this year, is The World Before Us by Tom Hyam. So Tom Hyam is the director of the Radio Carbon Accelerator Unit at Oxford University. Um, and I'm very familiar with his professional work, at least when it comes to Paleolithic archaeology. Um, so for me uh, personally, um, I was very excited when I saw that he was releasing a book for the general public about the um, topics that I'm very interested in, um, which is paleoanthropology, paleolithic archaeology, the advancements in um, the field uh, with you know, new dating methods and um, uh, paleogenetics. So this book focuses on around 50,000 years ago when Homo sapiens wasn't the only human um, on the planet. There were about four or five other different species, uh, you know, the most famous of which was Neanderthals, mm -hmm. Denisovans, um, Homo floresiensis, and I really enjoyed this book. Firstly, I think he did a really good job of um, making all of the um, uh, arguments and, you know, most, this, firstly, this is the most up-to-date um, examination of this topic. Um, it was published in March or April 2021, um, and it, uh, it does a great job of explaining um, how you know dating methods work um, in a way that I think people who aren't familiar with um, the science behind it can understand it. Also DNA analyses, um, how genetic sequencing works. Um, so I think he does a great job of explaining that and it, it really aids the um, understanding of the reader um, when he's discussing the argument that he wants to make. So, you know, 50,000 years ago, we, there were all of these other different species of human, not just us. Um, and he's looking at the migration of these different species, um, their evolution through genetic and um, zooarchaeological um, and dating um, methods. And I think ultimately, while he does a really good job of being apolitical, I think um, there, you know, there are some overarching themes, which I think are valuable, especially in this day and age, um, about, you know, what does it mean for us to be human? You know, we used to think that we were unique in that we were the only humans, you know, we are the only humans left on this planet. And, you know, um, in terms of primates, you know, there aren't that many other um, great apes, there aren't that many uh, others either. Um, so, you know, we're fast, it, it's not going to be long before we are probably the only uh, great apes out there, possibly. And I think um, because, you know, 50,000 years ago isn't that long ago in the grand scheme of, of you know, evolutionary time, 
um, but just uh, what does human, what does being human mean? Um, you know, we used to think that Neanderthals were so inferior to humans, but we're uncovering so much information um, and archaeological evidence that suggests otherwise. And I think at least, um, you know, as soon as, you know, as more and more discoveries are being made about other humans, um, you know, all of these things that we want to safeguard as um, being uniquely human potentially have much deeper roots than they actually do. Um, so anyways, that was a bit of a tangent, but I think he did a great job of um, summarizing uh, all of the most recent research, um, as I mentioned, and also, I, you know, it was really great hearing um, his reactions to uh, the discoveries and the research that he's been a part of in, you know, some of these eureka moments. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed that because I am used to seeing his professional work in um, articles, but it was nice just to hear um, or read um, about how he felt during those moments. So yeah, um, apologies if that was a bit rambly, but uh, this was my favorite book for um, the reasons that I mentioned in the rubric that I have, but also because uh, these topics are very um, important to me. So next, the um, other five-star read that I want to share with you. Um, this is The Perfect Heresy. Um, the Life and Death of the Cathars by Stephen O'Shea. Um, and this was published by Profile Books in 2001. Sorry, the last one was Vikings, which is um, Penguin Books. Uh, so anyways, this uh, this book by Stephen O'Shea um, looks at the uh, Albigensian Crusade or the Cathar Inquisition. Um, so Cather, uh, Catharism uh, existed or developed in probably the, is it 12th or 13th century, um, and was known to exist in France, Spain, Italy, um, Eastern Europe. Uh, and it, the focus of this is really in South Fran in the South of France. Um, I gave this a five star review, uh, star five star rating because I think um, not only is it uh, not too heavily academic where um, the general reader can't appreciate it, um, but I think it's balanced with really good research, but a lot of description um, that I think he does a really good job of evoking um, emotion and conjuring up these places so that you almost feel like you're there. Um, and I think while there is a bit of a, you know, an emotional element to this book that I normally wouldn't appreciate in other nonfiction, um, I think it's important for this book because this examines the genocide of, of Cathars, um, during this time period. And, um, I think, you know, for books concerning these points in history, um, where there's these deeply tragic events, I think for him to really capture and, you know, um, uh, evoke that sort of response and really bring to life these events, these sieges, um, these battles, uh, you know, um, just if I feel like I can just smell the festering and, um, you know, the stench of death that he describes. I think he did a really good job of um, humanizing um, this, you know, event that took place um, quite a while back. So I think uh, he did a really good job for, um, for that reason, um, for uh, tugging at my heartstrings, but also doing a, a great job of, of researching and uh, explaining the events that happened. Um, so yeah, that was another five star read that I had. So the only two star read that I've read this year um, would have to be The Little Ice Age by Brian Fagan. Um, and it really pains me to say this because I think that book had so much potential. Um, so the events in this book uh, concern the 12th to the uh, 19th century in Europe, um, and uh, Fagin does a good chronological examination of events that happen in, in Europe 
Um, but where I think, where I started docking um, points is really, I think his argument was really jumbled. There were two different points throughout the book and, um, you know, where he made different arguments about possible causes or, you know, cause and effect um, for the uh, Little Ice Age. And uh, I think one of them was introduced halfway through the book um, without any sort of, uh, you know, announcement. And it, I, it, it just made zero sense to me um, as to why he would do that. Um, so I thought it was a bit disorganized um, and uh, it, you know, for that reason, because I didn't think there was a, a good structure regarding the arguments, I think it was really difficult to follow. Um, and that was a shame because it could have otherwise been a really enjoyable read, but I just found it difficult. Um, so yeah, I had a, a few uh, four star and uh, three star reviews. Um, I had more, I I'm pretty forgiving, I think. Um, I had 32% 30, of the books that I read this year were four star reviews, whereas 26% were three stars. And uh, one of them that I wanted to give an honorable mention to was one that I reviewed earlier this year. And it, this is The Red Prince, um, John of Gaunt by Helen Carr. Um, so I think in my review, I might have been a bit harsh. Um, and I think that's because I was so excited to see this book um, being released. I really like Helen Carr. I think she's a fantastic historian. Um, and also I'm very intrigued by John of Gaunt um, and his character. And I think um, the reason I gave it a three star is because I almost, well, firstly, there were a lot of spelling mistakes in this book. Um, I don't think it was edited very well. Um, so that was one of the reasons. Um, it was just littered with spelling mistakes. Um, the second one, um, so I think the reason I gave this a three, three and a half star rating is because um, I think because Helen is trying to look at um, events from John of Gaunt's perspective and sort of um, topple the um, notion that John of Gaunt was, you know, just a, a real greedy uh, individual who was after his nephew's throne. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the crown of Castile. Um, I think because she was looking at things from his perspective, I think there was an over tendency, a tendency to over sympathize or, um, not necessarily apologize, but, um, or even forgive some of the actions that he's, that he's done. But I think, uh, it was almost a bit too sympathetic. Um, and I think maybe I was a bit too harsh because, of course, that's going to be hard to do um, when you're looking at uh, events in history from his perspective. I just maybe thought that there were there were times where I thought it was a bit biased, um, I think, uh, towards um, towards his perspective. Um, I mean, I don't think we should forget that. <laughs> you know, uh, thousands upon thousands of people died um, in his pursuit for the Castilian throne. Um, however, I do think there was a lot of good that John of Gaunt did. Um, I just don't think that, um, it, you know what, I'm just rambling on. I think you get the picture here. Um, so I'm wondering if I was being a bit harsh in, in my rating and maybe I would probably consider this a four star. But anyways, uh, that's that. Um, I just wanted to share this book with you because this book really did confound me for that reason. Um, and I've, I've sort of beaten myself up about it, but, um, I do recommend this. I did enjoy it. And uh, as I say, it's, it's a look at events from his perspective. Um, so if you're interested in John of Gaunt and you're interested in biographies that really do try to put past interpretations, um, you know, put, uh, put them under the microscope, uh, I think uh, Helen Carr did a good job of that. So yeah, so those were just some of the books that I've read this year. Um, I was quite uh, surprised when I was going through the list of what I've read. Um, so the year before, uh, it was an 80 to 20% split nonfiction to fiction, whereas this year was a bit more equal. So 60% um, of the books that I read were nonfiction, whereas 40% were fiction. And I think that's just because I'm becoming more 
um, involved in the community and watching more booktubers who do read a lot of fiction and my curiosity is piqued and I, I do want to be reading other things. Um, but I think uh, next year what I will be doing is focusing on a lot of nonfiction, um, but um, where it concerns hi modern history. So anything from World War II um, to more recent events, um, because this is a period of time where I really had no, I had no interest in it um, before this year. So, uh, you know, from the Vietnam War um, to recent presidents, um, I had no interest. You, you know me, I like things that are thousands, if not millions of years old. Um, but I think that's a period of time where my um, my knowledge is quite lacking. So I would like to, um, you know, become a bit more learned in that area. Um, and then in terms of the direction that I want to take this channel, um, you know, I've, I'm a bit, I'm taking it a bit more seriously, I think, and I'd like to do more videos about archaeology and share my knowledge with everyone. Um, I think that's something that I can contribute uh, at least. Um, while I like doing tag videos and telling you what I've read, um, I don't think I'm putting much anything useful out there. So I think uh, next year that's something that I'm going to be focusing on. So uh, if you want to hear um, about archaeology, let me know in the comments and I'll start making those videos. But anyways, if you've made it to the end of the video, uh, thanks for watching and I hope everyone has a great week. Thanks. Bye.